ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय This evening I will speak on a verse from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita that was often quoted by Sri La Prabhupada and is a well-known verse is uh, quoted by all Gorya preachers or speakers it goes as follows this verse is spoken by Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Asad Sangati Ag E Vaishnavacha, Sri Shangi Eka Shadu, Krishna Bhakta A, which means that the uh, typical behavior of a Vaishnava, a devotee of Vishnu, is, or, or the characteristic is that he gives up bad association. And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu defines what is that bad association. One is Sri Sangi, one who associates with women. And the other is a non-devotee of Krishna. Now, this statement might seem to condemn the whole class of women. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to save all the jivas in the universe, not only male humans. So this should be understood uh, in context. Now, uh, it is a fact that within Shastra, or the corpus of Vedic knowledge, there is, uh, there are many statements to the effect that one should, or one who desires the highest good, the highest perfection, should give up association with women. Or various words are used. Stri, Mahila, Nari, there are so many different words for woman. Uh, particularly this word is often used, stri, which comes from the same uh, Sanskrit root as the word vistar, which means that which is expanded or that which expands. So this idea of expansion, materially expanding, dreams, ambitions, and practical property, pra I mean practical goods, that is uh, suggested, or an indication of that is given in the verse of uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, in which Rishabdev, who was instructing his sons, uh, stated, this is another verse often quoted by Srila Prabhupada, Pungsastriya mittuni bhavametam, Tayoraho hridaya grantimahu Ato griha kshetra sutapta vitaya Janatsya moho yamahammameti How many of you have heard this verse? Yeah, if you listen to Srila Prabhupada's lectures and read his books you'll find this is quoted many times. It's, it's one of those harsh truths of the material world which generally people don't like to hear very much. Janma Mrityu Jiraviyadhi, birth, death, old age and disease. These are truths. These are, truths means it's uh, unavoidable fact of the material world which people don't like to hear, but we have to hear if we are to become detached from it. And if we don't become detached from it, then we cannot become attached to Krishna. So the verse, uh, this verse, Pungsastriya Mittuni Bhavameta. The attraction, uh, Srila Prabhupada translates this as, the attraction between male and female is the basis of material existence. 
and when they join together, <coughs> then a hard knot in the heart is formed. Then, ato griha kshetra, so there's this, this idea of vista, expanding, that from the attachment to wife comes a further attachment to home, uh, one's own personal property, or uh, one's own country, janani, janma, bhumishcha. What is that? Swarga meva this This uh, saying is there. It's not a transcendental saying. It's a very materialistic saying. That my mother... Nowadays people don't care for their mother, but in civilized cultures they do. The mother and the uh, motherland, the land of birth, I consider more glorious than heaven. So, Ato Grihakshetra, then uh, children, particularly sons, uh, relatives, friends, and money. So in this way, uh, one be, be, because of uh, entanglement in family life, one becomes more and more uh, in the embroiled or entangled in the concept of I, me, and mine, which is illusion. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, "Asat Sangati Age Vaishnavacha." that a devotee gives up bad association. Bad association means that which will entangle us in this material world. And first of all, he said that Sri Sangi, one who is attached to woman, uh, is one kind of bad association. Now, at the same time, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, yeah, is this a condemnation of all women and a condemnation of all, uh, everyone in the world except a renunciant. Uh, in the Shankara Sampradaya, that coming from Shankara Acharya, uh, there, there are many people who claim themselves to be followers of Shankara. But those who are actually, I mean, his, his followers, uh, he would make them into sannyasis. Because his idea was that Unless you renounce the world, then you can't become detached from it. You can't, you can't make spiritual advancement unless you completely renounce the world. And of course, in those days in India, you can only become a sannyasi if you are from Brahmana caste. So he didn't actually have that many direct followers, although they were quite powerful. Uh, but others, but, yeah, but he, he didn't recommend that Everyone immediately come to that stage, but uh, for those who are less able to do so, he recommended that they follow the regular Vedic injunctions of Varnashram Dharma. So, uh, this idea is quite prominent in, in India, that if anyone's going to take up spiritual life, immediately they have to take sannyas. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu didn't say that. And many of his followers were uh, married persons. Uh, and he didn't... Some of those who are married, they did leave home. But mostly Chaitanya Mahaprabhu didn't insist on that and he didn't... Uh, <clears throat> he didn't promote that one is necessarily better because of one's position within society. Uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu famously said, at least Srila Prabhupada quoted this uh, many times, that Kiba Bipra Kiba Nyasi Shudra Kene Noi Jai Krishna Tatta Veta Shri Guru Hoi. That whether one is a uh, Brahmana, whether one is a Sannyasi, or whether one is even a Shudra from the lowest stratum within Varnashram society, if one knows the science of Krishna, then he can become a guru. So in, implicit in this, the, the point is that 
knowledge of Krishna qualifies one as a guru, not any particular situation uh, within society. Uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also said, Jaha hoite Krishna bhakti, she guru hoi. From whomever one uh, receives Krishna bhakti, devotion to Krishna, such a person is a guru or can be a guru. So, uh, th- there are many such statements. So, um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, among his uh, intimate followers, uh, one of the uh, very most intimate, was Ramananda Rai, who uh, apparently was a uh, very rich person. He was uh, the governor of the, an area of South India. And he, he left those duties to live with, to associate with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But the king, who was also a devotee of uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, gave him a f- retirement with a full pension. So he was a rich man. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu never told him to give that up. Now, uh, Srila Prabhupada actually asked his Guru Maharaj, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sasrara Thakur, that how is it that uh, some of the devotees of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, like Rupa Goswami, they, Tyaktva Turna Mashesha Mandalapati Shrening Sada Tutchabhak, they left everything. They left home, family, wife, and all these to serve Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, as others like Ramananda didn't. They remained in that situation. And Srila Bhaktisthan Sarasar Thakur said that, well, whatever is best for serving, that one will do. If it's better for serving Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then one should renounce home. If it's not better, then one shouldn't. That is the consideration. It's, the main point is not to renounce or not to renounce. The main point is how Krishna can best be served. That is the actual goal of life. So, uh, we find that uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had many, many associates. Actually, most of them were, were uh, within family life. And there was no discrimination that one is better than another due to being within family life or not within family life. But at the same time, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, he, by saying that a Sri Sangi, one who is uh, attached to Sri, they are non-devotee. So he, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu pointed this out. So Sri means uh, one who expands. So when one has a wife, then naturally things expand. Children. Then you need a place and you need uh, so many uh, household appliances and so many things. So if one uh, becomes attached to these as people generally do, uh, that is entanglement in material life. Bhaktivinoda Thakur has sung many songs expressing how he became entangled in material life. Although we know that Bhaktivinoda Thakur is a great devotee of Krishna. He's a pure devotee of Krishna, but he's expressing that I became in, entangled in so many ways. One of the greatest devotees of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, was Srivash Thakur. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhara Srivas. So Srivas was... Uh, Married man, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would every night perform kirtan in Srivas's house. One after returning from Gaya, after taking initiation, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, remained at home before accepting sannyas, and he would every night he would perform kirtan all night in Srivas Thakur's home. Uh, once, Bhaktivinoda Thakur has also described this incident in his uh, in a series of songs. It's also described in Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat. Once, uh, 
while Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was performing kirtan at night uh, in the inner chamber because women would not live with men. They would live in a separate part of the house, the inner chamber. There, there was some crying and uh, Srivash Thakur, his son, had died. Suddenly, unexpectedly. So the kirtan was going on, but Srivas became aware of this. And he went inside and found out what had gone on. And his reaction, uh, you have to understand this in context, that unlike in America where people, uh, they throw their children out of the house at age 18 latest, I've, you know, I've looked after you enough. Get out, look after yourself. That uh, in India, and it's especially in former times, that now India is becoming like the West in all ways, and it's not an improvement in any way. Uh, people are very much attached to their children, especially to sons. So when Srivas got the news, he uh, he became very upset. Why did he become upset? He told all the women, stop crying. You'll disturb Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's kirtan. He said, if you don't all stop crying, I'm going to go and drown myself in the Ganga right now. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself, he stopped the kirtan and said, because he's Antaryami, the indweller within everyone's heart. So he himself stopped the kirtan and said, what's going on? I don't feel the, the, the usual ecstasy. There seems to be some disturbance. Srivas, anything happened here? Srivas said, yeah, what happened? My son died. <laughs> but anyway, you go on. You don't. You go on with your kirtan. So then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to the place where the dead body was and revived that boy. Wait a minute, wait a minute, the story's not finished yet. And then the boy started speaking. He was just a baby, but he, he hadn't spoken, he started speaking. And said that, uh, dude... I, I've been revolving in the cycle of birth and death and due to my past activities uh, I was able to take birth in this house uh, and have the darshan of you, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, so now that is my... He spoke as a self-realized soul. And then again, left. So he just came. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu revived him uh, long enough to speak words of wisdom for everyone's edification. Then again he left. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was so pleased with Srivas for his attitude that he said that, well, you lost one son today, but now, because he was quite an older man, he said that, uh, but you'll get two. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, myself and Nityananda will become your two sons. So lost one and got two. So... This is the level of the devotees of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They're on such an exalted level that uh, although within family life they're fully attached to Krishna, they're fully attached to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So uh, for them, family life is not any obstruction to advancement in Krishna consciousness. Their wives are three they're expanding, but uh, no, not so much expanding the family life as expanding the Krishna consciousness. Is there, if a wife is like that, then such a wife is certainly uh, a great help in Krishna consciousness. But one who is uh, who associates with a wife for the for the sake of uh, material enjoyment. Uh, someone who has no interest in Krishna consciousness but is simply concerned with enjoying this material world, uh, such association is 
uh, most detrimental to one's spiritual advancement. So, the persons who take to Krishna consciousness uh, within family life, they are supposed to understand all these principles. And uh, even within family life, Cultivate detachment from this world. Now, what does that detachment mean? That detachment means that one should regularly hear and understand the actual facts of existence in this world. That janma mrityu jaraviyadhi dukkha. This material world is miserable. There's birth, death, old age and disease. So, you may have a nice family, nice house, so many nice things, but these are all temporary. These are not of any real value or any real meaning. They, they, they will just exist for a short time. So one should not be attached to these things. But on the other hand, uh, those who are in family life, they should also uh, not be not exhibit what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu called Markata Vairagya, which literally means monkey detachment. It literally means that. That uh, a monkey is in many ways similar to a human being. But one thing a monkey doesn't have May have many wives, not wives, but they don't have wives. There's no wedding ceremony. Uh, many girlfriends and no responsibility. <laughs> but he appears to be very detached. But what is that detachment? The, the, the kind of detachment where one doesn't care for, for anything in this world, not because of a higher principle, not because of attachment to Krishna, but just because he's a useless bum. That kind of detachment is that it doesn't take any responsibility, either materially or spiritually. That kind of detachment, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu called that monkey renunciation. So he warned Raghunath Das against that. Raghunath Das, who later was to exhibit among all the followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the highest standard of renunciation. <coughs> So, uh, all these points should be uh, understood uh, very carefully. Not to become entangled in this world, but at the same time, not th this, this idea that um, one should, the, the Shankaracharya's idea, that you cannot make any spiritual advancement uh, unless you just leave everything, because Shankaracharya's idea is, this, is that this world is false. But, uh, well, if it's false, then renouncing it is also false, because it's, there's no meaning to being either, to being in any situation in this world. And that's actually what comes, that's how, uh, Shankara's philosophy it's caused, it's one of the ways in which it's caused so much damage in the world. It might seem that it's very good. But, uh, the idea that this world is false and then, uh, then there's no difference between dharma and adharma, right and wrong. That's what it actually comes down to. If you say this world is false, then, then there's nothing to become detached from. There's no, so we find people who in the name of, they say, yeah, I mean, just everything is all one and we're just enjoying it. <laughs> we're enjoying the falseness. Mm -hmm. There's no need to take any uh, responsibility for anything because everything's all false and I'm also enjoying my senses. That's also false, but it's fun false. So that's... Uh, <laughs> Shankara didn't directly preach that, but that's the, <clears throat> that's the, that's how it's naturally misinterpreted. That's what it comes to. So, um, <clears throat> in Krishna consciousness, 
husband and wife should practice both. Both should practice detachment from this world while living responsibly within it. Family life is, uh, it is not in and of itself a spiritual arrangement, but then for that matter, sannyas also is not a spiritual arrangement. Anything in this material world uh, has no value, but if it's in Krishna consciousness, then only it has value. So the idea of living in this material world to enjoy it, that is particular, the particular symptom of that is through women. And we see that in the modern world, that everything is advertised with, uh, actually it's, it's become less now, maybe because of the feminist movement, it seems to have become less. Um, everything is advertised with pictures of beautiful women or just the whole idea of, that we should enjoy this world that centers on uh, sexual enjoyment. And the whole society is based on that. Srila Prabhupada would comment, seeing the big skyscrapers and big, it's all, this is all just an expansion of sexual desire to show we are very big, we, we own so much, everything just to uh, impress women. So in Krishna consciousness, men and women both should understand that we are not men or women. We are all eternal servants of Krishna. But that we are in certain roles and certain bodies and therefore uh, we have to act according to the duties that go with those roles and those bodies. Uh, but in, in any situation, understanding the temporality of this world uh, and the need to become attached to Krishna, everyone should practice detachment from sense enjoyment. One should not become a, an enjoyer of this world. There's one anecdote which was told to me by uh, one of Srila Prabhupada's godbrothers that once he was traveling in a train and uh, one at this time uh, when I met this godbrother Srila Prabhupada he was elder, elderly, he's passed away now but he, at this time of the anecdote he was a young boy maybe in his early 20s, something like that. In India, that's still called a boy. He's not considered to be mature until uh, maybe, what, at least 40 or something. Considered young up until that age. So he was a young boy, and uh, one sannyasi of the Gorya Mat entered the... They were traveling by train, and one sannyasi of the Gorya Mat was in another compartment and he entered their compartment, came to see the brahmacharis in that compartment and he saw this uh, devotee, Jyoti Sheka was his name, and looked at him and said, Sri Shonga Korcho, you're associating with women. And he looked around, it was a small train compartment, there were just a few brahmacharis and no women, he couldn't understand. What is this? He tell, he's telling me that you're associating with women, which for brahmacharis aren't supposed to associate with women. So, uh, then the sannyasi explained, because he was leaning against the seat, that was a kind of sense enjoyment. You see how strict they were. I don't think any of, a, of us could make it in the Gorya Mountain in, in the... <laughs> In those days, in those days, they, they, they wouldn't wear shoes. They didn't. They had some cars, but they generally they wouldn't use that. Only if there was some need, they would go barefoot here and there. Very austere. In Pakistan, those are tacos. Very demanding, we might say. So that idea that even the slightest, you see, I'm leaning, even the slightest. Uh, 
comfort, even bodily comfort, if we indulge in that for the sake of some personal enjoyment, that is an obstruction to our advancement in spiritual life. Just see. Just see. Now we may not be that strict. Srila Prabhupada didn't demand that we be so strict like that. But at the same time we should understand this principle that uh, any desire to enjoy this material world or even to be comfortable within it means that we're going to have to come back into this material world. So, uh, while living in householder life, it's understood not everyone can come immediately to that standard of full detachment. But while living in family life, one should uh, cultivate that understanding that we are only meant for the service of Krishna. Nothing is meant for my enjoyment. So, in the just like we see here in this house, there are pictures of Krishna everywhere. There's a picture of Prabhupada here. I'm looking, I don't see on the walls. Yeah, yeah, but I don't see on the, on the walls. It's good to have in the main room of every house pictures of Srila Prabhupada in every home, every Vaishnava home. You have a prominent picture of Srila Prabhupada. Um, so this is all to remind us that we are here to serve Krishna. We're not here to uh, imitate materialistic, sensual enjoyers. In other words, Vaishnavas may live in family life. That's, that's completely part of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's culture. Although, if there are young men who are uh, enthusiastic to accept that training, we are very enthusiastic also to give that training in Brahmachari life. Uh, but whichever situation one may be in, one should cultivate a strong sense of Krishna consciousness. And Vaishnava Grihastas should not be like, they should be quite distinct from the uh, materialistic enjoyers. should be quite a different atmosphere in the homes not of Vaishnavas. The, the spirit of that we are here to enjoy the world, that should be absent. It's not that one has to sleep on a bed of nails or flagellate yourself. You know what that means? Whipping yourself. There's these uh, Shia Muslims do that. In that one festival. And they whip themselves. So that's not required. One can live relatively comfortably but one should live for the sake of serving Krishna and not, just like we see in, in materialist homes, they fill the house up with all kinds of junk. Their, their, their cupboards are just overflowing with so many games they buy for their kids which the kids never play, never use. Or, you know, 70 pairs of shoes or something. Or how many can you wear? Maybe you need for the summer and winter different shoes and like that. But just this in America at the present time, this there's this collected this idea of accumulating more and more. people accumulate so many clothes, more far more than they, far more things than they need, and people are just buying things, shopping addiction. But a Vaishnava should be intelligent not to be sucked into that. This idea that you have to buy so many things. Keep things simple. Life is better when it's simple. And this idea that it's better, the more you get, the better life is. But no, it just becomes more and more complex. So keep life simple. Even Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Kirtan, Madanga Kartal, it's very simple. Very simple. And the whole spirit 
is very simple. Mridanga cartel, simple tune, simple mantra, everything but sublime, very elevated consciousness. Whereas in modern life is uh, the opposite, simple living and high thinking in Krishna consciousness, and very complex, apparently high living, but the, the, no thinking of any kind, just no, not even simple thinking, but just. Uh, St- just stupidity. Just the whole uh, modern society works on the principle that people are stupid, and it, it, they require to be stupid to be a to be an upright citizen of the United States of America. It's re- required that you're stupid, even if you have a PhD or whatever. You're required to be a consumer, which means that you're stupid. You buy all kinds of things that you don't need. And they advertise all kinds of things that you don't need and people buy it because it's in an advertisement. They incite, the advertisement incites their, their lust and their greed for all kinds of things that you don't need. So devotees should be high thinking, more intelligent. That you get from reading Srila Prabhupada's books that gives intelligence. The people don't have any intelligence. The schools and colleges, they won't give you any intelligence. They're the, They'll, they develop a sophisticated sense of uh, sophisticated stupidity, you could say. Not actual intelligence. If people were intelligent, then they'd be Krishna conscious. They'd, they'd see this material world is simply miserable. And that we should... And, and the, even, uh, we may not want to say this outside, but even the religious systems that people have, they are, they are really for people of very undeveloped intelligence. These ideas, for instance, that someone ate an apple and that's therefore all the suffering in the world is because someone at some point in time ate an apple. I mean, a lot of people believe this in this country, but it's really... I mean, it really... uh, It really doesn't give much credit to God, does it? And then people become atheists. They become atheists in reaction to the really stupid ideas that people have about God. Um, so, yeah, modern, I mean, the material world in general and modern society in particular is meant for cultivating ignorance. Maya means illusion, ignorance. And, uh, that ignorance is uh, exacerbated or, by the uh, contact with between a male and female for sense enjoyment. Therefore, uh, devotees, they should develop, uh, that's the very meaning of being a devotee, to develop a different kind, different consciousness. Krishna consciousness means a different consciousness to that of materialistic consciousness. It's The two kinds of consciousness don't go together. You can't properly be a devotee of Krishna and an enjoyer of this material world because enjoyment of this material world, the, this, the tendency to do so, is the very uh, tendency that it, it's opposite of Krishna consciousness. Krishna consciousness means to understand that Krishna is the supreme enjoyer. We are meant for service to him. We are meant for his enjoyment. Everything is meant for Krishna's enjoyment. So that spirit should be cultivated. Uh, Then one will be safe from uh, the danger which is there in material life and uh, very are prominently in householder life if one has this spirit that we are here to enjoy. Once, this must have been 1976, I guess, um, Srila Prabhupada had an interview with Mike Robinson of the London Broadcasting Corporation, which sounds very grand, but it was just some you know, small 
radio company which probably went out of existence quite soon after that. LBC, I guess sounds like BBC. So, uh, anyway, that interview is published in the Science of Self-Realization. Prabhupada said to publish that. He said it has 90% of our basic philosophy in there. So, uh, one of the, f- the first questions of Mike Robinson, I, I was there when this was, it was an open darshan while he was interviewing Prabhupada. So he asked for, he was asked very good questions. And one of his first questions to Srila Prabhupada was, what is the purpose of life? It's a great question, right? Mostly reporters and journalists, they used to ask Prabhupada questions like, why do you have shaved heads? <laughs> So, but he he was he asked good questions. So Prabhupada replied, and I was really surprised at Prabhupada's reply. Prabhupada said, "To enjoy." I was surprised. <laughs> I thought Prabhupada would say the opposite <laughs> that to become detached from this material world. Prabhupada said, "To enjoy." And then Srila Prabhupada went on to explain that by nature, everyone is happy. The ten, to want to be happy is natural. But in our present situation in this material world, we cannot be happy. We're seeking happiness in the wrong place. Therefore, we should find out that place where we can actually be happy. Which is at the lotus feet of Krishna in Krishna's service. So, the enjoying spirit that I shall enjoy, that is antithetical to Krishna consciousness, to understand that we are all meant to serve Krishna, to cooperate together to serve Krishna, that is Vaishnava association, uh, that is conducive, to uh, that is Krishna consciousness. Uh, that has to be cultivated. Now, it can be very difficult in the modern world where or actually at any time, in any time, pretty much in any time, place or circumstance, if anyone wants to be Krishna conscious within this material world, others will discourage. Don't. Or be Krishna conscious, but not too much. That's another common one. So, one can make good, positive, strong advancement in Krishna consciousness uh, in any situation. Uh, but one needs to be carefully guided and accept that guidance. Uh, we may not like it. If, if we talk about different pastimes of Krishna, those who are devotionally inclined, they will like it. But they don't always like to hear about these topics, how we have to become free from the desire for sense gratification. They may not like to hear that, but we need to hear that. If we don't hear that, then the tendency is to become again entangled in sense enjoyment. Because we've had that bad habit for many, many lifetimes. And it seems natural to us. Srila Prabhupada sometimes used to quote a Bengali song. It may have been popular in his childhood. Uh, what is that now? Chog Jodi Bhalo Lage Keno Dekbona. If I like to see it, then why shouldn't I look? You understand Bengali? If my eye likes it, then why shouldn't I why shouldn't I look and see? But that tendency, let me just follow my senses. Then what will happen? Sharira Vidya Jal Jara Indriya Tahe Kal this body is a network of ignorance and the senses are the jara, jara indriya, the materialistic senses, the senses attracted to 
matter. The senses which are attracted to matter, they are like a death knell. Death knell means kala, means time in this context, means death. So, the solution is to perform devotional service to Krishna. What is that service? To engage all the senses in the service of Krishna. Tava icha mate indriya chalana. To all the senses, they should be engaged according to Krishna's desire. Knowing oneself to be not of this world. No, no uh, we have no position in this world, no permanent position in this world, to be absorbed in service to Krishna, who is the master of the senses. That uh, example is given by Krishna in Bhagavad Gita, that uh, transcendentalists should be Padma Patram Ivambhasa, like a lotus leaf, which grows in the water, but it remains above the water, and although it's surrounded by water, even if the water touches it, it'll fall down. It won't remain. It, it, water cannot remain. Have you seen the lotus leaf? If you put water, it won't absorb in it. It'll, it'll remain completely separate and will roll off. It forms like a, a, a round bubble of, in, in scientific terms, I guess it's like that. I can't remember. It's like that skin around it. It's, it, uh, it doesn't settle, to put it in simple terms. It doesn't settle on the lotus leaf. So a devotee, he lives in this world, sees everything, hears everything, touches, tastes, but that is his idea, that no attachment. Be attached to Krishna. So there are some thoughts. Krishna Bhakta, the other... Asat, or bad association, is the non-devotee, any kind of non-devotee. So, uh, there's one kind of non-devotee who's also not a stri sanghi. He's not uh, a materialist. He's not interested in sense enjoyment directly. And that is, but it's still not a devotee. And that is the impersonalists, who uh, they are apparently detached from this world, but they are not devotees of Krishna. And there may be impersonalists. Of course, uh, Shankara, he made that Sampradaya, which is very strongly established in India. The Advaita, so-called Advaita Siddhanta. But in the modern age, so many have come up with similar ideas, but somehow... <laughs> They've managed to convert it back to sense enjoyment. Or in all kinds of strange ways. Or sometimes they mix it up with bhakti. So that they'll, they'll chant Hare Krishna. Possibly. Or names of Krishna. But they, they don't have a clear understanding of Krishna. And they have an idea that, well, we're actually, we're all Krishna. Or even in the Shankara Sampradaya, they were traditionally very strict about uh, all rules and regulations following dharma. But uh, these neo-Advaita Vadis, they have no principles. Any of you know, smoking, some of them smoking ganja. Do you know that word ganja? Hashish. So we should be very careful. We, we should know clearly who is a devotee. It's not that anyone who chants Hare Krishna is a devotee. Some people who chant Hare Krishna are actually very envious of Krishna. Shishupal, he was always talking about Krishna, right? He was very envious of Krishna. So we shouldn't naively think that anyone who sings Hare Krishna, they're a proper devotee. Many are very envious. We should, we should avoid and reject their association. Uh, to, to understand all these points, Siddhanta Baliya Chitte Na Koraha Alosh, this is a very important instruction of Chaitanya Charitamrita. That we should 
not be lazy in the matter of understanding the proper philosophical understanding of Krishna consciousness, because by doing so, our mind becomes strongly attached to Krishna. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu rejected his friend from birth and close associate Mukunda Datta because Mukunda would come with the devotees of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and chant Hare Krishna, then he'd go off with the Mayavadis. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu rejected, no, nothing, we don't want you. You, you want to come here and go there, then go there, don't come with us. You choose this side or that side. You can't be in both camps. He rejected him, you don't come. Don't come and see me ever again. So then Mukunda inquired from other devotees, when will I get the chance to again say, is, you know, is this, how long is this going to go on for that I'm rejected for, you know, for a week or two weeks? Mahabharu said, after 10 million births you can come and see. Yeah. yeah. And Mukunda became very happy because he thought, at least I'm going to get another chance. <laughs> See, he could understand what a severe, severe offense he had made. And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, seeing that Mukunda was going to patiently wait so long, he said, all right, you come now, but don't go there. He was very strict about this. So we should be also. If we keep good association, very clear in what our goal is, understand the principles, then we can make proper advancement in Krishna consciousness. Hare Krishna. Any questions about this? Yes, please. Mm. Regarding the Adam and Eve in the apple. Yeah. Is, uh, well, it's not. It's not actually what's stated in the Bible, but that's how it's interpreted. There's no apple actually in the Bible. It just says a fruit. And the snake, it just says there's a snake, a talking snake. It doesn't say it's Satan. That's all later interpretation. Yeah, you want to read something? Very short paragraph from Krishna. Yeah. Uh, and then the question will become obvious. Mm-hmm. Uh, my dear Lord, may I inform you that this boy, this is a story of Bhagavad mm-hmm. uh, that this boy, whose name is Bhagadatta, is the son of my son, Bhagavad So this mm-hmm. is Bhagavad son. He has been very much affected. Uh, Bhamasura has been just killed. This is all happening. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bhamasura's father, the grandfather of the boy, is speaking this. So this boy has been very much affected by the ghastly situation created by the death of his father and has become very much confused and afraid. I have therefore brought him to surrender unto your lotus feet. I I request your lordship to give shelter to this boy and bless him with your lotus feet. I bring him to you so that he may be relieved of the reactions of all the sinful activities of his father. Mm -hmm. Yes. Karma can be uh, shared karma. That's also. Simply by associating with sinful people, one becomes sinful. So that's a fact. Actually, this Adam and Eve story... The, the point there uh, that we can understand from a Vaishnava perspective is to disobey the orders of God and to act for one's own enjoyment separately from Him. That's the point. And yeah, if, if one associates with sinful people, one becomes sinful. One, one should actually reject a sinful father, mother, or whatever. This, uh, Vibhishana became famous and accepted as a great devotee. He tried so many times to counsel Ravana, you are doing wrong. But Ravana would not accept and therefore Vibhishana left him. Mandodari, Ravana's first wife, she also counseled him again and again, but she didn't leave him and she's glorified for that. Oh, you have to teach her. There's practical point. Teach your children not to step over mridangas. <laughs> it's all part of Vaishnav culture. Don't step over anything, practically. Yeah. And yeah, you can put it up better, better than put it on the floor. Yes, please. Maharaj, there's uh, 
I know when I was trans- Th- this recorder will pick up all the questions nicely. Huh? Yeah. yeah, yeah. When I was uh, going from Brahmacharya to Grihastha, mm-hmm. I felt that there was a lot of confusion. Yeah. And I felt this actually from other uh, young men. There's confusion between Brahmacharya and Grihastha, and the confusion comes. Am I doing the right thing? Mm. And it's only after 20 years now that I understand I did the right thing because mm. I have a little grasp of Varnashram Dharma. I know where I'm situated, mm. what makes me happy and Christian conscious. But during that point of the confusion time, that, that, that void mm. between Brahmacharya and Grihastha, there, there's almost a, a whiplash effect of, of Am I doing the right thing? And if I'm not doing the right thing, am I sinning? Am I, you know, am I just going, am I on a path to hell and all this? What is a good read for us within our Shastra, especially within Chaitanya Charitamrita, that we can get an example of? Uh, well, actually, I have to write my book on family life in Krishna Conscious. I already wrote the notes for it, but it all needs organizing. Um, it's a funny thing that people, they, they, they need books. There's so many books to guide in family life and all for, for materialistic people. They're, they're mostly all based on, uh, well, they're pretty much all based on foolish ideas of you know, psychology and, and misconceptions. So people get, by reading these books, people get worse, into a worse situation. Because they have wrong ideas. Just like there's a, there's, they stress so much on compatibility, for instance. Whereas the uh, Vedic culture, relationship between husband and wife, and between anyone, anyone and everyone, is based on dharma, responsibility. The compatibility means that, well, uh, we're not getting on, okay, let's split up, because we're not compatible. But in dharma, there is no splitting up between husband and wife. Um, so, yeah, it's a very confused society. And even in the Western world, until fairly recently, people, even people were meat eaters and everything, but they got married and they stayed married and they, they didn't have any major problems as people do today. The modern world is, you must have noticed, people are extremely confused. The culture gives no shelter. There's no, sh- there's no shelter within family life, even after one's married. I mean, traditionally, the shelter was there, the elders, but nowadays people don't want elders because they're an obstruction to sense enjoyment. The whole, in, the whole family life is based on sense enjoyment, which means it's a disaster from the very beginning. Because sense enjoyment means to exploit matter and to exploit others. Whereas again, in, in dharmic culture, uh, the basis is service to others, responsibility. And, and even among materialistic people, enjoyment is there, but that's why there's marriage. It's understood to be a, a solemn vow before God to take responsibility. But now people are like, as Srila Prabhupada often used to say, cats and dogs, so they don't get married. They just live together for some time. So, uh, our, our devotees are also confused by this horrible uh, anti-culture that we live in. Because without knowledge of or experience of anything else, we tend to think this is normal and correct. But we should know that uh, marriage in Krishna consciousness is a, is a very different proposition to that of the marriage of materialistic people in the modern age. Very, very different proposition. It's entered into on a, with a completely different premise that we're, we're here together to serve Krishna, to act for purification, to bring forth children into the world, to train for service to Krishna. So it's uh, it's a very confusing age and people tend to be so confused that they, uh, it's, it's very, it may be very difficult for them to accept good guidance even. 
So uh, it is required that we have uh, spiritual leaders who can guide each other in in all ashrams. They guide guide others in all ashrams. And uh, Srila Prabhupada's I, one of his major projects, which hasn't really, you know, hasn't properly taken place in our moment, is to establish Vaishnava communities where devotees can live simply on the land, uh, which in and of itself creates a whole different culture and approach to life. Even living on the land, people in this country have no idea because farming is its another business. But the idea of living just... Yeah, it's it's another business. Yeah, they they consider it another business. They don't. They maybe don't even believe that you can get all your necessities just by living simply, because people have so many unnecessary necessities in the modern age. Nowadays, you can't live without a cell phone, but it, it all everything costs money. So then you need to produce, even if you're living on the land, if you don't have all these things, then you have to produce more than just your need. And then to do that, you have to work hard, and then you have to get machines, and blah, 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 blah. you just get entangled more and more. So, uh, as long as we are in this society, our devotees are going to, it, it's practically inevitable that our devotees are, going to be confused unless they very uh, strongly take to the process of hearing and chanting about Krishna and, and make a very strong uh, sankalpa, what is it, determination, vow to to be Krishna conscious. But even then life will be complex. The very nature of life in the modern world is it's complex. Sangsara vishanala. Sangsara Davanala, these are words I use, the, the blazing fire or the poison fire of material existence. So, how does that, does that answer your question? Just saying that, well, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult time, yeah, but then we have to take shelter of the process of Krishna consciousness very strongly. I'm always, I mean, there are different approaches to presenting Krishna consciousness. One is, that, okay, just take to it, chant, do whatever you can, and that will help you. And certainly it will help you. Anyone who takes to Krishna consciousness in whatever way, they will certainly be benefited by that. But on the other hand, and another approach is, come on, let's get into it really, fully, seriously. Because you can't get the full benefit by the half-hearted approach. Krishna reciprocates as much as we surrender to him. So, Atma Nivedana, fully surrendering ourselves to Krishna. That's the ultimate stage that we have to come to. We should focus on that and aim to move toward that. At the same time, uh, we can't, we should understand that we do have material attachments and that we, just to uh, try to throw them off may not be that easy. Therefore, it may be required to enter family life. Which means, not for the sake of cultivating material attachments, but for the sake of uh, dovetailing those attachments in Krishna's service, knowing that one, if, if one can't, if, if one finds oneself in a situation where by trying to uh, live as a brahmachari, one's mind is excessively agitated, then it's, it's, it's not properly situated. Yeah, some? Uh, I, my memory serves me. I listened to a lecture of Prabhupada where he speaks about the subject of shared karma. Mm -hmm. Even saying neighbors and 
my question is that if the implication of that, that we are sharing karma of our society, our neighbors, and who we're associating with, uh, to get rid of that means to, like maybe Shun, preach to our society, preach to our neighbors. Yes, that's good. We should preach to others. If, if we're not, actually, if we're not preaching against this, then it's, uh, what is that? Monam sammati lakshanam. That, uh, silence means consent. So we should preach. Yeah, it's a good point. We should preach against that. We may partake, unless we are, uh, preaching to uplift others, then, uh, we, then by our implied consent, we may be, uh, we'll be affected by the, by their attitude and their consciousness. We should understand very clearly that without hating all the people around us or, and, or simply condemning them, we should know that we're living in a very, very sinful society. This is not how people should live. If one feels comfortable and natural in this modern materialistic society, then he's not properly situated in Krishna consciousness. <laughs> this apparent comfort of life in middle-class American cities, we should know this is acquired uh, at the expense of tremendous violence to to jivas and to the earth. It's a sinful society. If we're to be, if we're to clearly understand. Yes. Um, the moment we we deal with um, people outside the work, school, whatever we do, these are the people just three sangi and they're they're all three sangi, yeah. They're not Krishna devotees, that's for sure. And a lot of times we may not be able to preach to them, but at the same time to progress in whatever we are trying to do, we have to associate with them in, in, a, in a different way. How do we balance? How do we balance that? Well, there the answer came. We should preach. Unless we're preaching, we may not be able to, in our work situation, we may, it may not be uh, advisable to preach very directly. But still, if we're associated with people day after day, we should want to try to help them in some way, isn't it? So maybe give them prasadam, or keep a picture of Krishna on your desktop or something. So people Let people know you're a devotee, isn't it? And then uh, at some point they may inquire about that. Give them, at least try to give them some prasadam. Try to help them. If we're in, if we're, we're followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and we're associated with people day in and day out, then surely we should want to try to benefit them. And uh, we we can preach to others by uh, maybe not those we're directly more directly we can preach by going on Harinam Sankirtan. By uh, by distributing books, even right there at the temple, there's, there's so many people are coming to the restaurant. There's a, there's facility. I mean, just bring them into the temple and show them around. I mean, there's so many things. There's tremendous scope here, and definitely anyone who comes, they'll they, they know we're Hare Krishnas. There's no, you know, they don't have a big hang up about that. So you can you can invite them into the temple, and definitely. Uh, uh, after taking prasadam, they're going to be, anyone will be impressed. Even, even, even from just like an artistic or aesthetic viewpoint, the temple is very impressive. And then, uh, that provides a platform to speak further. So, I mean, there is scope for preaching here. More. So. It's the duty of all followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to preach the message of Krishna consciousness within everyone's capacity. We should do that. 
And that will help to keep us uh, free from the bad effects of having to mix with materialistic people. Although, you can bear in mind also, think about it, beginning of activity, first thinking, feeling, and then willing. Think about the uh, Prabhupada's, uh, all, all, all followers of Srila Prabhupada should be very aware of Srila Prabhupada's uh, very strong desire to establish rural communities of Krishna consciousness. So at least you can be aware of it, think about it, and you never know, something might develop from there. I just talk about it. But from the talking, others are acting. It's, I've been talking about this for years, and now some devotees who are uh, associated with me, they're establishing some projects like this. Because it's a... I mean, I, how can, if, if we're actually developing in Krishna consciousness, this whole materialistic society definitely will become distasteful to us, isn't it? What do you think? You, you wrote to me about that, was it? That there is, it's not that everyone has to go to the land. You can live in modern American life. And like I say, we don't hate everyone or, but, uh, we we should see the whole society is sinful, but our attitude should be to see people as um, misguided and un- unfortunate. We don't hate the people. If we hate them, then we can't preach to them. We can't benefit them. So uh, most of us here in the, or most of you here in this room, will be spending most of your life within what may be called normal society, we should try to give something back to it. Right? Yes, please. I have a question about this. Um, My husband and I have been discussing this for a few years, and recently a friend of ours told us that um, the American uh, Agricultural Department is giving loans. So it became more of a reality that we would transfer to a rural environment. They're giving loans for what? Setting up ranches? Uh, for agriculture, like farms, any um, rural development, meaning some, like small businesses. If somebody wants to start their own farm, if you want to buy a property, if you want to buy a house, mm. they'll give you a loan. Mm. So I thought about, we were talking about this, mm. and the only thing that seems like um, the we have like a desperation for pure association, like, and I thought, like, what's going to happen if we go to a rural environment? We're, I already feel like so much separation from, like, to like really relish pure association. Like, what's going to happen to us if we go to like that kind of environment? Well, Srila Prabhupada wanted to establish rural communities yeah. of devotees. So how do we make that a reality? Because I've seen yeah. the devotees that have a like a home and or a preaching center in a rural environment it's like very neglected or you know just no but rural communities yeah. it's not so much recommended that you go alone into the wilderness no no not, not <laughs> meaning like preaching centers and um you know like an actual community where there's yeah well, community you know, is environment. itself preaching if we have a good Vaishnav community <laughs> so many people will like to come and see how we how we're living happily in Krishna consciousness. That in itself is a kind of preaching, isn't it? There are farms in uh, Southern California where people pay money to go there and, and dig for these people, work on the ground, you know, in, in the dirt and plant stuff for them. And they pay to do that. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, after three months they leave. <laughs> this is what my parents do. They do what? My parents, they... They've started you know, three farm communities, and they Vaishnav communities. Farm communities. Yeah, but Vaishnav farm communities. Uh huh. Uh-huh. And they have karmas come <laughs> and plant everything, raise everything, toil, 
dig it up, and then my mother cooks it and offers it. Mm. And then there's a yoga retreat on the side. Yeah, there's plenty of possibility for all this. Prabhupada was way ahead of the times on everything. In, I don't know, do they have that here, woofing? They have that in Europe? That's a similar thing where people just come and voluntary, voluntarily work on the land. I saw recently, I was in Scotland, we have some rural community there, and people come and they, they just, they do uh, like that voluntary work. They don't pay, but they do voluntary work and for some time and they get prasadam and, uh, and, and board. Yeah, they don't. They pay for work. Really, <laughs> but from that, from the coming like that, um, devotees were telling me several people had become devotees actually. This is also happening. Yeah. If if you're in that if you're in that environment, you're growing your food, you're offering it to Krishna, you're content, then uh, people will come to you. Now you're with you. Please listen. I have to look after you. So the people will come to you and you can preach to them. Say, look, this land is given by God. Everything's meant for his service. You can, then you'll be in a much better position to preach. Anyway, uh, it's something that has to be deliberated upon. It's not something that everyone should jump into immediately. Rather than strong, it says that the devotees have put a lot of demand on the cow that the cow has to supply their internet, their cars, <laughs> their trips to India, and they say oh, it can't be done. Self-sufficient farm can't be done. We have to go to India. Every well, so, yeah, again, yeah, that's I mentioned that, right? Self-sufficient means we don't. We have to cut down on many of the so-called necessities. There may not be trips to India. You may come for pilgrimage to Dallas, to Kalachanji Dham. That was traditionally uh, in India. People, they, they going on pilgrimage might be once in their life. They go a long distance, or or if they live not too far away, then in the in the uh, season when there's no growing, then some, not everyone can go because someone has to stay and look after the cows and everything. Usually the older people, they would walk. Pilgrimage means walking. So you wouldn't be very far unless you're really going for a long trip. So nowadays pilgrimage has become uh, much easier and normal. But traditionally it was uh, not not so often done but then the people who went on pilgrimage what uh, having the opportunity to do that only rarely and going by walking and and uh, you know what benefit they got from the pilgrimage what meditation we just take it very normally fly into delhi and take a taxi and go to the five star air conditioned vairagya mahal and, and, you know, <laughs> You see, in Vrindavan, there's there's, there's uh, advertisements, five star apartments with uh, air conditioning, TV, internet. <laughs> so yeah, you could maybe come in every so often to uh, Kalachandi Jam and and make the make in the village. You can make uh, worship of Krishna. That that should be there also. Anyway, you can think about it. Like I say, probably most of you won't do this, but you could maybe support others who have the uh, wherewithal and to do it. And the point is, wherever we are, if we are in this modern society, also within this, within this situation, really do our best to be Krishna conscious and to try to bring others to that. Also, there's tremendous facility here. For, for I mean, it's very, very presentable, I mean, isn't it? It's a good facility for pre- city preaching. So bring others. Bring others. You can just show them around and people will definitely they'll be, be impressed. And you can tell them, this is Krishna. He's the Supreme Personality of Godhead. You can tell them. Why not? That's what they need to hear. So, in the Sankirtan movement, it's a group effort. So, 
I, I can suggest that you all uh, participate more and more in the group effort to let the people of Dallas know who the real boss is over here. <laughs> the different people are looking for votes, but Krishna doesn't need any votes. He's always superior. The, the, you can you aim for the time when the the mayor of Dallas on a, on coming to office, the first thing he'll have to do is go and bow down before Kala Chandji. That day should come. I think we'll finish now. It's getting a little late for all the early risers. Yeah. You really think I thought he was wonderful? What 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 struck you as wonder in particular? Um, I like the story about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that you explained. Uh, you have to be one way or the other. Material life or spiritual life, you can't be in both places. All right, okay. I have a question about children, Maharaj. Um, how do we raise our children to be humble so that there is no pressure? They don't feel like we are pressurizing them and there is conflict. Yeah, it's a completely different culture. Huh? It's, the, the culture makes you non-humble. <laughs> it's for making humility is seen as a fault humility I don't think is the word even there in the modern dictionaries <laughs> maybe it's like an archaic they'll list it as an archaic word or something no it's uh, the word they use is lack of self esteem yeah lack of self esteem humility doesn't mean this cringing Srila Prabhupada was humble, following in the footsteps of Hanuman, attacking the demons. Humility means to serve Krishna. So it's not that you just teach people to be humble. It's all part of the package. All these qualities come together. Let every Teach the children that we are servants of Krishna. If they understand that, that is humility. This cringing obsequiousness or sycophancy or in modern American licking the backside is uh, that's not humility. Humility means to act in one's position as a servant of Krishna. Do the needful, whatever is required for Krishna's service. But definitely is a challenge raising children in the modern society. We see that if the Srila Prabhupada's formula was if the parents are Krishna conscious then naturally the children will want to follow.